My name is Laurent Gras and I'm a chef for the past 30 years. As a chef, I use uh, cuisine that I learned over the years, um, which is based on uh, European essence. But I also love um, Japanese cuisine. Um, I travel a few times in Japan and experience amazing meal. Um, I discover new way of uh, presenting food and serving food. With the experience, I combine the two cultures together. I experienced Wagyu uh, probably 20 years ago uh, and you know, I didn't know what Japanese Wagyu was, was at the time. So I get the Wagyu and you know, I kind of gather information and I cook the Wagyu and then I try it and, and of course I love it. So the first preparation today I decided to do a dish which is a little bit more feminine, um, which is a bit more light uh, in flavor and combine ocean and field. Field being um, the, the place where the wagyu lives and ocean where the lobster lives. So the lobster, it's uh, raw and cooked, uh, seasoned with lemon juice, Mayo lemon zest and salt, and the wagyu has been cured into kombu for just about 24 hours um, to remove some of the moisture which is absorbed by the kombu and to bring some saltiness to season the, the meat itself. And the meat has been diced, and then the two preparations are side by side over uh, a few uh, fresh seaweed which I picked two weeks ago um, in Long Island. So for the second course, I decided to turn the Wagyu into a hammer. By not drying the Wagyu for 12 or 18 months, but using a miso which I made uh, two years ago uh, with chili, uh, bran um, and all sorts of other ingredients but these are the two main components and then I cure the wagyu and I let it dry for about a week. This piece of uh, wagyu shrimp loin I've been cured with a house made chili miso 15 days, 10 days and 5 days. That was an experimentation so when you when you develop a dish, you always want to know what is the peak time of the products. The five days um, has the most appealing aspect, then slice it, then make it very thin, and then just warm it to melt the fat and brings all the flavor out. Uh, a little bit of salt, uh, and I serve the Wagyu with a preparation on plum. Um, we have been preserved with salt and uh, hibiscus flour and then turned into uh, a marmalade um, and then a few slices of uh, uh, watermelon radishes to bring a little bit of freshness and, uh, and spiciness. So for the ham on, um, you have toast on the side and those has been made out of uh, milk bread made with a dashi with milk and also wagyu fat. And when the dough is turned, uh, it's baked over a sheet of kombu to really flavor the bread. Then it's cooled down, sliced, and then pan fried on one side with a bit of wagyu fat and a touch of salt. So for that dish, I, I love coffee. And, and I always feel that coffee goes way, very well with fatty ingredients. Uh, it 
counterbalance uh, the fattiness, you bring some bitterness and you bring some almost some umami that you wish to you know bring but not entirely just a touch of it just like you put a pinch of salt uh, on the steak you bring a touch of coffee into um, an ingredient was a lot of fat so I felt the combination of the two would be very interesting so I decided to make a cure um, with a koji uh, rice coffee and a little bit of bran and baste uh, the shori with it and uh, leave it dry for more than a week and that piece is just here and then warm in the oven and sliced and one ingredient that works very well with coffee is blueberry and blueberry and also with the wagyu um, counterbalance you know the fattiness by bringing some acidity um, and of course I mix the blueberry with uh, uh, wagyu uh, stock or wagyu jus however you want to call it uh, to make a deeper uh, dipping sauce. So that dish came from one night I had Toro home and I did some sushi and I have some leftover trimming which I didn't want to waste so I chopped them very fine and I seasoned them very well and I served them on warmer rice than, than sushi rice so it was lightly warmer and then I put the Toro on it and then some of the fat start to melt and drip inside the rice and then, and then we eat it and then we feel it was like amazing. So when I get a Wagyu, I said, that's what I'm going to do. So I just kind of tweak a little bit the seasoning and make it a little bit more umami, put some truffle, uh, some silver kombu, just to work in the same direction that you counter the fat <clears throat> by adding very high uh, umami ingredients. And then it's served with uh, rolls of daikon to fresh your mouth, and then a dashi to kind of clean the whole dish. The last dish, um, I love cocoa powder. And what I know about cocoa powder, it's a very good companion for either meat, um, was a lot of fat, either meat who is very high in blood. So for the Wagyu, I felt curing it uh, with salt will uh, kind of create a crust around it. And then baking that piece of meat into a cedar and smoke it will really complement and bring a level of flavor very high which would be a perfect call for the last course uh, of the meal. Uh, the meat, I think the meat was cured for about 10 days. So it's a, it's a longer curing. It's very light in salt. Um, so the, the, the drying of the meat is not uh, uh, excessive. Then it's just wrapped, uh, burn over a high a grill and then bake slowly in a low oven. And then as a garnish, uh, Spinach works very well with, you know, cocoa powder. Um, it's compressed, so we increase um, the the texture of the leaves, and it's just poached very lightly into a clarified batter with chive, and it's served with olives and an essence of uh, wagyu beef. Wagyu is cooked like any kind of beef. You can eat it sear, roasted, raw, cured, and the result is amazing just because it's an amazing and luxurious product. <music>